Hey guys, what's up and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to change things up a bit and not talk about my actual animals, but about the feeders for my animals. Now, not the feeder mice or feeder rodents in general, but the feeder insects. Obviously, all my lizards need feeder insects and since I have quite a lot of geckos, I have a lot of feeders and I really hate leaving them in the little packages that they come in because they just don't last long. They don't have space, they don't have food, they don't have water, so I always set them up properly in boxes where they can live and even reproduce. Anyways, I will show you guys all of my feeder insects, how I set them up, how I make sure they survive for the longest, how they can reproduce in my setups, and yeah, basically how I keep and breed my own feeder insects for all of these animals. Alright, so I got everything set up right here. I have two containers and some aspen snake bedding. You can use um, really anything, oatmeal or wooden chips, whatever you like. I have some fish food, some normal veggies that are cut up and my actual feeders that I bought. These are some feeders that are already in their boxes that I just need to replace the food for. So I'm going to show you guys how I do this. So first I have my smaller box for my smaller crickets and I will start off by, oh yeah, by the way, and I've got some egg carton here just for them as well. I like to put in some aspen first or some wooden, just something for the ground, no particular reason for that. Um, you can use toilet paper or kitchen roll as well, that works just fine. I don't know, I just have this aspen left over and I don't really want to use that anymore, so that's why I use it here. So I like just spread this out like this. Okay, so for the veggies, I always like to use a small dish just so it doesn't like get all over the place and gets the wood mold moldy because that's not nice at all. So I will take some of the carrot and a little bit of cucumber as well. In here, I'll take my fish food, which I have right in here. So kind of like this is one feeding dish for these guys. So they get all of their water uh, from the liquid in the foods. Now I will take my egg carton and cut off a piece so it will fit in there. Okay, I just have to rip it really because the, the scissors I have here are super flimsy. So I ripped off a little piece and you can provide another one if you like. I will do that right now. There's another piece here and I'll just kind of stack them on top of one another for them to hide in. And this one will be for my small crickets. I don't know if you guys can see them. So they will all go in here in a second. I'll put them in there. But let's first prep the one for my bigger crickets. So I got this top, which is a little bit bigger. Um, this is not today's date, I believe, but I can't get it off. Okay, so I took the plate that I had all the food on before and I just put away what's for the other ones and I'll put their food on here. So fish food is just for dry food and the wet food is obviously also for drinks, for drinks, for drinking. Then I've got the large crickets right in here. The shop didn't have a big variety of food, so this is what I got. So what I also provide to the big crickets is just a little cut up piece of the packages they come in filled with dirt because they will actually lay eggs in here. So that's how I do that. I will spray this down in just a second so the dirt is a little bit more moist. And you will be able to see the eggs once they lay them. They look kind of like rice corns, but then way smaller. But um, that's basically what the eggs look like when they lay them. And then after two weeks, I will just take this thing out, put it in a smaller container and wait for the little crickets to hatch. And well, then I basically do the exact same thing for the smaller crickets and they will grow up eventually. So anyways, I will put this in here as well. I just kind of like to stack them on top of one another so they have like little things they can crawl in in between because I know they like that. And I'll put this right here, this last thing right here. 
So they got plenty of hiding space. And well, these guys will go in here. So how I put them from this thing into this thing, I am so horrified of these. I don't touch them. I don't touch anything close to them. So what I do is I basically put this lid over like halfway. I open my little package container thing and I open that because I normally don't just jump. They're not that crazy. I'll take out th this part and I just put it in. They will, they will find their way out eventually. And then the ones that are left over in here, I just kind of force out, I guess. So that's basically it. That's how I set them up. I will still spray down the dirt a little bit so that they will have plenty of substrate to lay their eggs in. And I exchange the food every two days so that they always have fresh veggies. So we'll open this. As you can see, they're very small. This is a package of small crickets. Sometimes one or two will jump out. You really, really can't prevent it. It sucks, but that's why I have a reptile room, so I don't have to worry about them being my freaking living room. I would flip if that were the case, I think. So I kind of shake it up so they all come out from underneath the substrate and then just give it a little tiny shakes for them to basically either fall into the box or jump. So I have my mealworm tub here. I need to clean this thing out again. It's such a hassle all the time because most of these things that look like worms right here, they're just skins because these obviously shed too. There's barely any worms in here. I can't even find a single one. Um, but since it's like hard to get the skins out without getting the worms out, um, I don't do that too often. I always sift it in order to get the, well, poop out. Um, but the skins are really hard to take out. Anyways, for these guys, I really just provide them with new oatmeal once in a while and then just some slices of carrot or potato or apple, whatever I have in the moment. So I just put in some slices of carrots and they will chew on that if they feel like it and they will also get their liquid out of these slices of carrot and that's basically all I do just to keep them alive for longer and not have to rebuy them constantly I do plan on making this whole thing a little bit bigger to really breed my feeders myself so I will not or barely have to buy any feeders anymore so then I will be putting everything into bigger tubs have more tubs and whatnot but for now that's really all I do just for them to survive couple of weeks until I have fed them all off which usually I, they don't last me a couple of weeks with the amount of animals I have but it's good to have them last longer than three or four days thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I see you again soon